Now you had a new class in the southern United States. You had uh, you know, lower class working blacks competing for the same jobs as the lower class working whites. The problem is that they've been used to working for nothing and working really hard. So they can get the job over, over, uh, over the white guy who's been lazy for a lot of years because they're harder working and they're, willing, and they're, they're looking for a job to get paid money. So, so racism actually started, if you can imagine it, slavery ends, racism actually starts to get worse. It's hard to imagine, but once one white guy loses his job to somebody who before didn't even have their freedom, then he starts hating that person. And the hatred spreads, and this conti continues. By the time it got to be the 1920s, that song that I was singing there from the 1920s was written on a chain gang. Um, because in Mississippi, for instance, a law was put into effect that meant vagrancy, meaning having no money in your pocket, was a crime that was payable uh, with a $50 fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how do you pay off your $50 fine? And you'd be surprised, just before harvest time, how many people got caught for vagrancy, having no money in their pocket. Well, the way you work it off is 50 cents a day um, in some place like, for instance, uh, well, you might have been working on Stovall's plantation before when you got laid off or something like this, but now, now you're going to a penal institution. You're going to some government-run gigantic uh, uh, parchment farm, for instance, that was 30,000 acres. And you've got to work to, at $50 a day, or 50 cents a day, for 100 days to pay off a $50 fine. So that song there, I don't want no more cornbread, peas, and black molasses. Because that's what people were getting fed. Because not only did people want the work done for free, but hey, food's starting to cost money. And so you chins out on food and you realize, ah, now people get sick of scurvy. They get sick with scurvy and they can't work. So they learned that you could put together cornbread, peas, and black molasses and get just enough protein, just enough carbohydrates, just enough vitamin C and vitamin A that nobody got sick. So it's this, this thin gruel of this stuff served up virtually all the time. Then the next one, I got a letter from my mama this morning, said, son, come home. And then the next verse after that is, but I ain't got no ready-made money. I can't go home. And the next verse after that is, if I had my June, July, and August, at 50 cents a day, then I'd go home. Now you know that song wasn't written in the days of slavery because it was illegal in the days of slavery for a slave owner to permit a slave to learn to read or write. It was, that was illegal. So, of course, you can imagine then also when the sharecropping system takes place afterwards, then here, I'm going to show you the books where you spent all this money at my, at my uh, plantation uh, uh, store. Well, what good is that to me? I can't read those books. I don't know how to do the math that's written down in there. I've got a system of doing math, but I don't understand all these lines on the page. So, it was such an oppressive situation for so long. And, uh, and yet, out of this, rose this incredible music.